Anyone here seen the Boogans? Just me again, okay. Uh, it's so bad, it's really funny. You really should go see it, but be warned when you go see it. It's not like the book at all. Um, <laughs> Interesting thing about the Boogans, though, it's a nice, refreshing change from most horror films because the Boogans were monsters. And you see, most horror films are psycho killers. You know the old thing, the guy, when he was a kid, he goes to summer camp and the kids give him the lousy bunk, so he has to come back 20 years later to kill everybody because they gave him the lousy bunk. <laughs> so, you know, it's a change from that. The Boogans were monsters, but they didn't spend a lot of money on the uh, monsters. Uh, they looked like Muppets on drugs, you know. <laughs> but we're supposed to be afraid of them, and uh, we'll buy that to uh, watch the rest of the movie so you won't feel too bad about spending so much money. And you're watching it, and it has that part where you know something's gonna happen. The two women are left by themselves in the cabin, and one woman goes, I'm gonna go to town and get some more supplies. Are you sure you don't wanna come with me, Susan? <laughs> no, I'm just gonna stay here all by myself. What could possibly happen? <laughs> Well, gee, I don't know. The movie's called The Boogans. We haven't seen one for 20 minutes. What could possibly happen? <laughs> Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. First person to die. And the Boogan monster comes right through the floor, a solid oak wood floor, like it's a piece of paper. Like <laughs> She's in the kitchen. She takes a pot off the stove. Going, Get away from me, you monster. <laughs> Like, it comes through the floor, a little pot's gonna stop it now. Like, you know, what's the boogers gonna do? Oh, no, they got Teflon. <laughs> so, she dies, deservedly so. And, uh, the other woman comes back from town with the two bags of supplies. They say supplies right on it because we couldn't figure that one out. Uh, all of a sudden, it's a Sesame Street movie. And uh, she opens up the door. She sees this trail of blood leading to a large hole in the floor. So she follows it. <laughs> Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Next person to die. I mean, by this time, you start rooting for the boogans. So give me a B, give me an O, give me another. <laughs> They deserve to die. They're morons because in reality, if any one of us was in a house and this psycho or the monster had just cut off the heads of the four biggest people we knew in the entire world, and from the other side of the house, we heard a noise that sort of sounded like, I don't care how many of my friends are upstairs. Screw them. <laughs> Out the window, down the road, into the next country, like the roadrunner trees coming up behind me. I hear one violin, I'm out of there. <laughs> I love the people in the films. They always, they always act the same way. They know no fear. I was like, hey gang, what was that noise? Come on, let's go check it out. Let's go die, let's go die, let's go die. <laughs> Hey, the flashlights don't work. Let's go in the dark. Let's go die. Let's go die. But first, let's split up. Yeah. Bill, Barbara, Sue, everybody take a separate path. Oh, yeah, and the guy in the wheelchair, you're going on that wave all by yourself. I hate the way they exploit the handicap. You know, there's always that one guy in the wheelchair, and he knows he's gonna die first. Right? He's like, I know I'm gonna die first. And I don't see why I have to go meet this guy. He'll find me, just follow the tire tracks in the mud. He'll find me. Sure enough, there's some psycho with a chainsaw. As far as a horror film that did what it was supposed to do, which was scare me, uh, I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, came pretty damn close. Uh, Keeps me out of Texas, that's for sure. <laughs> Based on a true story, I'll work here, thank you. There's only one good thing about a chainsaw is you can hear it coming. You got about 100, 100 yards to get yourself out of there, you know? It's, I mean, with a gun, somebody can sneak up right to your head, you know, surprise, oh no, I'm dead. You know, a chainsaw, <laughs> Until they start putting silencers on chainsaws, we got a shot. <laughs> Another interesting thing about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was why none of the actors were nominated for their Academy Award acting. 
They go down the road, they run out of gas. But... I think we're out of gas, dear. <laughs> oh, 12 Oscars over here, please. 12 Oscars. Oh, brilliant acting. We'll be seeing you in a lot of other movies. Then the part where the wife suggests we should go look for some more gas, the best part. Why don't you try that old abandoned house over there? Yeah, uh, the one with the blood on the door? Sure, I left my brains in the trunk. I'll go. The guy goes up to the door, knocks on the door. No one answers the door. So what do you do if somebody doesn't answer the door? You walk right into the house. <laughs> hey, I wonder what's in the basement. <laughs> There's a psycho in the basement. Where's it gonna be, in the patio with lemonade? I mean, yeah. oh, God, what do you want from this? Get your head cut off for a nickel, come on over. <laughs> neon sign, psycho lives here. I mean, God. Much of a clue do you need? But they continue to put these films out. It's just amazing. They make tons of money. They're laughing all the way to the bank with these films. 